Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I welcome all of you to our Ramadan series. Today we will be talking about Surah 103, Surah Asr, a continuation of our conversation that we began yesterday. So if you haven't watched that first part, make sure you go and watch it where we talk about the four meanings of this oath. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take this oath of Asr? Now there is so much that we can uncover today. I can literally the next until the end of Ramadan, the next 15, 17, 18 days that we have, it will be no exaggeration that all of that we can dedicate to this magnificent surah. But time is of the essence and as always, there is so much to cover. So today, let's talk about ayah number two of this wonderful, amazing surah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر verse number two Allah سبحانه وتعالى says after taking an oath by time he says indeed the human being is in a state of loss now notice over here Allah says إن indeed undoubtedly certainly meaning there are no two ways about this that the human being is in a state of some translations will say to you perpetual loss all right Imam Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah mentioned something amazing over here. He says that the term used to talk, to convey the meaning of loss, khusr, is indefinite. It doesn't have inna al-insana lafi al-khusr. No, it doesn't say al-khusr. It says khusr. Okay, which means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, is teaching you and me, there are many, many uncountable ways of losing yourself from the commandments and the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there are only a handful of ways to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is only one path to guidance. In other words, there is only one path to guidance, but multiple paths to misguidance. Now, this is very interesting here. Inna al-insana lafi khusr. Undoubtedly, the human being is in a state of perpetual loss. Al-khusr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say al here. He said there are numerous ways of going astray. And we see this in our times, don't we, my dear listeners? How many are the avenues to sin? How many are the avenues to get derailed? How many are the avenues to get sidetracked from the worship, from the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the purpose of our creation? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, all of humanity is in a state of loss except those who fulfill four conditions. What are these four conditions? This is the final verse. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ Except for those who have faith, who believe, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And do righteous and good deeds, good actions. وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ And engage in counseling one another towards truth, towards the uh, truth and not falsehood meaning towards the Tawheed, towards the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, towards this faith, this true and correct faith of Al-Islam. وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقِّ Towards the truth. And of course, in this, the word truth is expansive uh, in meaning. Uh, it can also take the meaning of not giving false testimony, not engaging in lies and frauds and evils of this sort, but to stand up for truth. And then, وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقِّ and the fourth thing is upon patience. They counsel one another upon patience. Now, before I go into breaking down each one of these, and subhanAllah, time is ticking. These four conditions are actually concentric circles, meaning large circle contained inside of it, a smaller circle inside of it, a smaller circle, and finally the smallest circle. Okay, so what's the largest circle? It's that of Iman. It's that of true faith in Allah and his revealed books and his messengers and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is Iman. That's the largest circle. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And then do righteous deeds. Because if a person does good deeds without having proper, correct faith, then that righteous deeds will only take them so far, will only benefit them in this world, but not 
in the hereafter. So contained within it is good actions. And then we are a nation, we are a people who we don't just keep to ourselves and just do good deeds. It's my life as long as I'm doing things. No, we're concerned about all of humanity. We're a people who want to not just go to paradise alone. We want to take all of humanity with us into paradise. That is our mandate. That is our ethos. That is the way we operate. That is the attitude that you and I have. We want to take people with us to paradise. So we don't just keep it to ourselves, keep this faith to ourselves. And this video is one such small, measly attempt at doing that by putting it on the interwebs. What is that? Tawasi bil haqq that you counsel, you remind one another about truth, about justice, about right and wrong, that there is a right and wrong, that nothing is up for debate, nothing is up for grabs. No, everything, there is a right and wrong in life. Okay, so we counsel one another to truth and then contained inside of it is the final, the fourth circle is and when you call people towards truth and righteousness and piety, What's going to happen? You will be labeled. There will be people who will be your detractors, who will go on a smear campaign and then take snippets of your words from here and there, stitch it up and portray you in a very malicious, evil light. This will happen. What do you, should you have? What attitude should you have in the face of all of that difficulty, adversity? Patience. You got to have patience. A point of benefit here as well, the scholars mention, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Mentioning patience at the end, in reality, it is being emphasized four times. It's amazing, right? Putting sabr at the very end actually means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and then he talks about sabr. Then he talks about, الصالحات, he talks about sabr. Then he talked about, بالحق, he talks about sabr. And then with sabr. Amazing, right? Meaning, to have faith, you have to have patience and perseverance. It's not easy just to have faith. You must be disciplined. That takes patience. To do good deeds, is it easy to stay hungry and thirsty throughout the days of Ramadan? If it's not for patience and perseverance, it takes patience to be in the path and obedience of God Almighty. And to remind others, it takes patience when you talk to somebody and they spit in your face, when you talk to somebody and they're bullying you online, when you talk to someone and they're slandering you with malicious lies, right? It takes patience in the face of all of that, that you don't stop, you keep going. You don't stop and you do not give up. And then, and then in having sabr. And finally, and I'm close to my 10 minute mark, Finally, again, there are so many lessons, so this is by no means an exhaustive uh, uh, treatment of this beautiful uh, uh, surah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching you and me the importance of community. We Muslims are all about community. And like I mentioned to you, it transcends not just the Muslims, but even non-Muslims. We want guidance for them. We want good for them in this world and the hereafter. Islam is emphasizing unity. So, O oh Muslims, do not be disunited. Do not tear each other down. When the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, as is reported in Bukhari and Muslim, he sent Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhu together to Yemen to preach and propagate the message of Islam, the Prophet, peace be upon him, gave, him, gave them golden advice. He said, ensure that you're going there and you do not differ amongst yourselves. Because he knows it's human tendency to differ, but settle your differences amongst yourselves, not in the public sphere. Complement one another, help each other, settle your differences amongst yourselves. Be easy going on each other. Oh, Muslims, are we easy going on each other? It takes patience. And especially around the world, we're seeing the raging course of the pandemic and people are dying, losing their lives. It takes patience to remember that, ya, oh Allah, things are happening with the wisdom only known to you. We do not know everything. Oh Allah, you know best. 
so you turn to him in patience. My time is up. I hope you benefited from this reminder. If you did, consider sharing it far and wide amongst all of your social media networks, your friends and family, and follow me on my social media handles, on my Facebook page, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and follow me on Instagram. Whatever questions you have, send me a direct message. I read all of your comments, all of the details, and my daily live streams in the month of Ramadan, including my Jumu'ah Qutbahs. Everything is given in the description of this video. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.